Hello, Scott Pantel here, CEO of Life Science Intelligence. And today I have the privilege of meeting with Ken Nelson, Chief Commercialization Officer of Barty Diagnostics and currently an executive with Biotronic, one of the fabulous entrepreneurs that presented at our conference this past year. Ken, welcome. Thanks, Scott. Happy to be here. So, Ken, get us current. If you could give us uh, some info on the acquisition, how's it going, and get us current on what you're doing today, the audience would love to get, get an update from you. Yeah, sure. So it was uh, an interesting sequence of events with, um, with Biotelemetry, who's the biggest player in the space, getting acquired by Philips first. That was announced at the end of December and then finalized a couple weeks ago. And then the number three player, uh, Preventus, getting acquired by Boston Scientific. And that closed yesterday. And Vardy, which we were quickly able to become the number four player overall, and the number two player in the non-real-time patch segment after iRhythm, uh, and that acquisition by Hillrom was announced in late January, and I think the close-by date is April 15th. So it hasn't closed yet, but everybody's keeping their fingers crossed. And I, I understand that uh, some of your investors in Vardy are also participating in our upcoming event. Tell us how you tell us how you heard about. The LSI event and maybe talk about some of the connections uh, there if you can. Yeah, sure. So uh, I actually presented and pitched uh, Barty Diagnostics last year and we found out about the conference just from going to different uh, venture capital events across the country. I think it may have been one of the Wilson Sonsini meetings and we were recommended um, to reach out to you all. You all had, I guess, been tracking Barty and invited us to present. And it was a great meeting. I mean, we met with a, a bunch of different strategics. We met with a bunch of different um, uh, venture capital investors. And we actually had a board member who was at the event. And it looks like this year in 2021, you've got Paula Violet and Greg Madden from SV, both who are uh, presenting or participating in the event. And both obviously great, uh, great part of, of the, the med tech venture community. That's great. It's a small world out there indeed. And, and we were tracking your company for some time and it, it's just, it's so great to see you guys have such success. And of course, we always like to brag when one of our alumni companies raises capital or gets an exit. At the end of the day, it's all about helping a patient, which is what you guys do. And so we, we tip our hat to you. Congratulations. Thank you. Now, tell us a little bit. Um, well, actually, before we talk about your, your new life um, and what you're doing these days, is there any any advice you would have for the CEO of the startup that will be presenting at our upcoming meeting as they're preparing for our event? Is there any advice you would have for them? Yeah, I think two things. One, uh, take a look at who's going to be uh, participating, who's going to be attending the conference as far in advance as you can, because there's a lot of different people that you can meet with and you really want to schedule your time out as, as far in advance as possible. Uh, and then second, and I always talk about this just in general, when you're doing your pitch, you only have a, a, a short period of time to do the pitch. If there's any way to personalize the, the pitch and bring it back to some type of personal story, I feel like that's what people remember the most. Uh, and, you know, they're seeing tons of pitches. So do something that can help you stand out and, and really help want other people who you may not even have a meeting with want to try to meet with you for lunch or coffee or dinner uh, throughout the meeting. But it, it's a, a jam-packed meeting with tons of, of events. So, You guys obviously had a lot of success, so I'm sure that advice will go a long way. And thank you for sharing it. Sure. Um, talk to us about your new role. What, what are you up to these days? And, and uh, what, 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 we, what might we yeah. see over the coming year uh, from your yeah. efforts? Yeah, so it's been, uh, it's been an interesting career. I was with uh, Guiden in Boston Scientific in cardiac rhythm management for 10 years. And then the last 10 years, I really spent building uh, the teams, cultures, and infrastructures for what have become the three biggest players in the cardiac monitoring space. The first one's iRhythm. And I was at iRhythm when they were you know, a tiny startup and helped build them out. And they, of course, led to a, a big IPO and pretty sizable uh, valuation at this point. And then biotelemetry, 
which uh, is the number one player. They're doing over a million patients a year now, cardiac monitoring, uh, and was with them for five years, helping to build them out. And they just got acquired a couple of weeks ago uh, by Phillips. And then of course, the last three years with Barty, building them up uh, from the ground up. And, uh, and of course they're, they're in the process of getting acquired by Hillrom. So it's been a, a fun 10 years helping to build these companies in the external monitoring space. Are there any other areas that are especially exciting to you these days from a technology or a market standpoint? Yeah, you know, I, I love the wearable space. So there's a lot of different patches that have come out. In fact, there's a company that's coming out to your event called Bloom Life. Mm -hmm. uh, the CEO is Eric Dye. And that, that's just an example of some of the other types of wearables, out, wearable patches outside of cardiac that are also really exciting to me. It just, you know, when you look at, at telehealth and remote patient monitoring, they finally have exploded. Uh, unfortunately, it was the COVID-19 really that became the catalyst to drive the awareness and adoption that, that's taking place now. But needless to say, uh, that market is really taking off. And so I'm, I'm invested in you know, over 20 different healthcare startups. Uh, so I'm, I'm very interested in med tech and the evolving innovation in the healthcare space. So uh, I, I will probably do my best to, to make time to come out to the, the program. Scott, I think it was unbelievable last year as a presenter. And I would love to see some of the innovation that, that's going on. Uh, and that's happened over the last 12 months. That's great. We, we hope that we'll see you. And I'm sure some of these companies would, would love to connect with you as well. Um, so before we shift gears to, to kind of the impact that this year has had on, on us all professionally and personally, yeah. I have to ask, uh, what's the backstory to the sailfish I see there in the background? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, it's, it's a funny story. I, I went um, fishing, it was about, I don't know, 15, 20 years ago, uh, off of West Palm Beach with my grandfather, and he'd never caught a sailfish. I'd never caught a sailfish. Uh, we're not big game fishermen, so the you know, I don't want to pretend that I'm some some great fisherman. It's not that at all. We just had a, a great day deep sea fishing, and I caught one. And 20 minutes later, he caught one, and I think his was two inches longer. This <laughs> fish, and uh, he's never let let me live that down. So he brings it up, or brought it up every time I saw him for the the, the next 15, 20 years. <laughs> Ken, I, I'm not going to lie, okay? You're a humble guy, but it, it, I get the feeling that if you, the things you touch turn to gold quite often, uh, and that may include the companies you're working with or the fish that you're out chasing, but uh, that's a really cool story. Um, so this last year has been obviously uh, quite a year on many fronts, and one of the questions that I like to ask entrepreneurs and executives like yourself is, what, what has the silver lining been for you? It can be from you know professional, personal, both standpoint, but what, what are some of the things that came out of this past year that you're especially uh, grateful for? Yeah, so I, a, a couple of things on a personal level, I went from being gone and on an airplane about every day for the last 10, 15 years to, to being at home and actually getting to see my kids grow up and, and sleep at home. Uh, for the last year or so. So it's been, a, it's been a huge silver lining to get this time that I wouldn't typically have uh, with family. So I think that's the biggest silver lining and just seeing the families walking around the neighborhoods and doing the different things that they're doing during COVID as a family. I think it's really tightened the family unit. Uh, and then from a, a professional standpoint, you know, I've, I've been in this, this wearables remote patient monitoring world since 2010. And, uh, and the cardiac side of things, we did pretty well, but there's other parts of the industry of telehealth and remote patient monitoring that had unbelievable technology. Awareness was getting out there, but the reimbursement wasn't there and the adoption wasn't there. And I think COVID really has accelerated all of those things I just mentioned. So seeing that, that technology really get the, the, um, the adoption that it deserves has been great. And I think all of that is gonna continue to accelerate. I don't think it's gonna slow down. I don't think it's gonna go back to the way it was. Uh, innovation is, is just really taking off. 
uh, when it comes to telehealth and remote patient monitoring. So I think those are the biggest silver linings. And then the third thing, uh, even on the, the professional level, using some of these technologies like we're doing right now over Zoom, uh, it just wasn't as, as utilized as much as it should. And uh, sorry about that. And, um, and I think the amount of time people spend traveling will be reduced. And I think that will be a good thing for everybody, for families, for work-life balance, for everything. So I think those are the biggest silver linings uh, from the past 12 months or so. Well said, I couldn't agree more, especially in regard to the family. More time with family has been, been a theme across the board, I think for all of us. Thanks, Scott. Thanks for giving us that opportunity to present last year. That was a phenomenal experience and look forward to joining you guys again this year. That's terrific. Sounds good, Ken. Thanks. Thank you. Uh -huh.